you know, small guys. We're gonna let those get all happy and caramelized with the bacon and the renders. So once again, I'll make sure I use my protein and not cross the dinner. See how quick that, you know, it'll start to saute. So you have to be quick when you go to a high sink and make sure you keep it moving or it'll burn. You don't want it burnt because then it takes the flavor. You didn't know you got burnt flavor. So that's why you just constantly like. Yeah, you burn. always gotta watch it. And low heat, you know, you can't do it on low heat because then it just sweats. Right. And then it's just, there's no texture. The flavor's all watery. You want it to high sear to caramelize it. Especially when we put the Brussels in there. So cool. We got everything going. We're gonna move this up so we can get the chicken breast fired now. It's been marinating for about 30 minutes. Chicken breast doesn't take too long to marinate. You know, you, you don't have to marinate it overnight and stuff. Give it some good acid, good seasoning. Make sure you grill season so it sticks. Like I said, these are full breasts that, that were cut into thirds. So all you gotta do is cut out a bias cut, and then you don't even have to tenderize it or pound it out. You just, you know, leave it whole. Hmm. So also like that, I should bring the bag over to this part so I'm not crossing over my veggies too, right? Right. Because once those are cooked, they're gonna be ready to eat and you don't want raw juices, protein juices on them. That's true. That's the big thing when you cook for yourself, you always gotta be careful of sanitation. It's important, you know, to not cross contaminate or Try to eat undercooked foods. And I'll show you a trick once these chicken are done, how you can tell they're done. So you can see like our, our uh, bacon onions over there are starting to caramelize more. Yeah. So let's get these moving. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that smells good. So we want it nice and hot because we're about to put the Brussels in them. And Brussels have a lot of water. So these have been blanched. And if you get a nice caramelized, you know, get it nice and caramelized with some fat and onions and seasonings, they're delicious. I grew up with a traditional kind of frozen Brussels, never fresh, so this is kind of, you know, this is how you could break the palate from what you're used to, you know, having from my generation younger. It's something more elevated. And then if you're ever cooking for your friend or your lady friend, you know, you can cook some nice veggies. But you see how we're kind of doing everything in stages here, sir? Yeah. It's all time management. So well, by the time everything is done, you can bring it to the table and serve. and serve, right? You're not waiting for this or that. And we're doing it all on a grill. But like I said, the important thing is making sure you get all your prep ready. Make sure there's no cross contamination and keeping everything clean and doing it in a timely fashion where everything's just getting done. You always want to season things. You know, I cooked this in salt water, but it's still going to need a little more salt. And the bacon's going to be a little salty too. So you got to make sure and you're always adjusting. You don't, you can always add, you can't take, right? Right. Yeah, so we want to get a good high sear to get those uh, Brussels nice and caramelized now. The portobello are about almost ready. And then we'll replace it with this asparagus. Yeah, see, look at that. Oh, yeah. Your mom loves portobellos and mushrooms. She's going to be so happy tonight. <laughs> All right, so we're going to move these guys over here. Go to the breath. Get happy. Any protein after cooking, you should always let it rest for at least five, ten minutes. Not to, you know, you know, especially steak, you gotta let you know rest a little longer. But chicken, about five minutes, and then all the juices, you know, redistribute back into that muscle, and it's all nice and juicy and happy. You cut it too soon, it's all gonna go bye bye. Hmm. So yeah, I'm gonna get these a little more dry. 
This is just a regular canola oil with a little 20% olive oil. So it's like 80, 20, 80% 80 canola and 20% olive oil. That keeps the smoke, smoke point up down and it keeps it happy. So here's a just seasoning that I like my blend of seasoning. I just kind of use it all through it. So it's easy. We're not having to change up, right? Right. All right, let's go check those Brussels. Alright. You That's see that? You yeah, see no burnage. You can see everything staying nice and green and happy. You don't want blanch you want to blanch your, your brussels enough where you know they're still green, but you don't want to turn them, you know, light green when they're gone. Of course, yeah, we're out here. In the beautiful breezy acres of Virginia. Oh yeah, up here on the hill. Just enjoying. A beautiful day. So now I'm gonna pull out these beautiful tomatoes. And then I'll do the peppers. Keep those to the side. And then I won't touch the jalapenos to last so I don't, you know, get everything else too spicy. So this is gonna be my kind of part. I love spice. The mom likes spicy a little bit. You know, not like that. No jalapenos for mom. All right, we're still holding a good temp. You see how I'm getting the oil coated on all this? Yeah. Get all the seasoning coated. Nice even coating, nice even cook. Boom, everything's perfect. All right, get these all spread out. These aren't going to take too long, right? I'm going to take it probably about three to four minutes. Maybe a little longer, but you gotta keep one eye on those. Those are so quick. Those have been pre blanched just like within like 20 seconds, they got heat. All right, our chicken breasts are looking happy. You see the bottom right here? How it has that white edge? Yeah. That means they're ready to flip. See, boom. I uh, see. So you're just looking for that white edge just to Yeah, bam. and see how it releases? Yeah, look at that. It doesn't even stick. That is beautiful. And that's been on for about five minutes. And what I like to do, a lot of cooks in restaurants that I've worked in, they like to turn it twice and then flip it, get that diamond. But I've always liked to do the four flip where it cooks even. You cook, you flip it once, flip it again, and then the third and then a fourth. You're getting the three rotations and you're getting the diamond at the same time, but the meat is cooking evenly instead of cooking heavy on one side and then flipping doesn't cook even doesn't make sense all right the brussels are looking good yeah see that it's getting a nice little caramelization we probably got about three minutes on that We'll get a mix on our pur our butternut puree. Heck it's yeah. more of a it's more of a butternut smash. You know, it doesn't have to be puree and perfectly smooth. You know, I like a little more texture. It's more rustic. You know, it's gonna taste good. Why add a bunch of more ingredients if you don't have to? Right. Let the ingredient do the work. Of course, everything's gonna be hot. Like that kind of handle when you reach for stuff, always gotta be careful not burning your hand. Right. All right, so now we're gonna move back to our asparagus. Get our veggie tongs. And then we're just gonna kind of flip them back over here. Just to cook the other side a little more. Of course, it gets really hot, especially when you're wearing gloves. Right. Oh, come on guys. There we go. You know you wanted to come. There you go. We're happy now, aren't we? Alright, everything's looking happy, right? Right. We're gonna kill the heat. You see that it's starting to get a little a little brown there. That's good. So we're gonna turn it off right there. We're 
Butter is the best thing. It, you know, you don't need sauces on a lot of things. You just need that fat a little bit. It doesn't take too much fat. Just enough fat. And that fat right there will help, you know, the heat's off, right? Right. So the fat will help release all this down here. It's called font. And all that font is all the good flavors. So, so that's what you're trying to absorb. Yeah, from. you want that to come up a little bit. Because that's where all the good stuff, and then you get that nice rustic color, nice rustic kind of rustles. Beautiful. So let's go back to our chicken. Flip it one more time. Some of these are probably gonna have a couple more minutes. But you'll know, like you can see by the size, and like you can you feel the firmness and this, how it's springy. Well, can you also tell, like when looking at it, like this white part's more raw than like this more tan Well, of part? course. I mean, you can see raw parts. You know, obviously, like that, it's right. raw. So that one's probably gonna take a little bit here and there. But you can also feel when it's firm and springy that it's pretty much almost there. All right, let's get these brussels. Out of the pan. We didn't really prepare for a trash can, guys, so we're just kind of, we're doing this kind of on right. the fly. But that's the way you do it when you're cooking, right? You're not doing that setup when you're cooking at home. No, you just got everything kind of spread out and you're just maneuvering through stuff the best way you can to make it efficient. But like Isn't that right? I know it is. Stuff, Chris, this is the best stuff, like, you know, this is how you're going to eat better get better vitamins, it's healthier. It does take a little prep, but the end result is so much better. Yes, and that's what we're looking for. We'll put the asparagus right on top of this. Bada bing, bada boom, huh? Done. Look at that, see? You see how they're not you don't want asparagus drooping down. You want asparagus that still has a little bit, you know, see that little bit of life to it. Right. But it's not hard, but it's nice and soft, but has some firmness to it, texture. Look at that. See, look. Woohoo! No bend. They're all ready. You know that's a happy asparagus right there. All right. Boom. So we got all of our veggies ready. We pretty much have our starch. It's not starch, but we're gonna make it pretend like it's starch because we're traditionally used to having starches with our meals. So now I'm just gonna kind of turn off the grill because it's gonna finish off the rest of these. I mean, because we're at 400, 500 degrees. Right. You Even with it laid up, it's still pretty hot down in there. But see, this is the final flip. You see how they still got their diamond? Yeah. But see, they're co they cooked even. Mm. Instead of, a lot of, like I said, a lot of cooks will just, you know, cook it, turn it, get the diamond, and then flip it, and then turn it, and they get the other diamond. That's not an even cook. Mm. What's the point? All right, so now we can move on to plating while we're waiting for the chicken to finish. You know, and you're cooking for your family, you know. You can use your own fork for tasting, you know. Right. You're not cooking in a restaurant. You got you got taste. How, how is it? It's good. Just, just a little bit, a little more cinnamon sugar. Not just cinnamon sugar, there's no brown sugar. Got you. Just a little bit more butter. Butter makes everything happy. Just a little bit of salt, just to enhance, bring out the more, the flavor a little bit. You don't want it all sweet. You know, you're not eating, you don't want to eat like a... Dessert. Right. But you still kind of, you know, it almost looks like um, sweet potatoes, right? Yeah. It's still fibrous. You know, those fibers are good for your, your you know, intestines. They help clean everything out more. You know, it just, it's all around beneficial for your body. 
right. That's so what we like making, beneficial body food. We can get ready to plate and okay, take different. So I'm gonna do two versions of the same dish, like we have the spicy and then just normal, because I like spicy. So, see I just made a mistake in not using my hand towel. Usually I keep little it bit, right here on my apron. A little bit hot? Well, it's a little bit hot. I'm used to hot, but you want to be careful. You don't want to drop it when it's like, oh my God, it just burned my hand. Now I can't enjoy the meal I just prepared. Right. That was a waste of time. Chicken breast is looking good. Grab our veggie tongs. You know, nothing fancy, just a couple of asparagus. You know, you don't have to eat everything. You know, the good thing about eating is you want to eat moderately, right? You don't want to put a big old portion, put, which, put a little bit on. And then, oh, I wasn't satisfied, let me get some more. You should feel good and satisfied without feeling gorged and stuff from your meal. So I always start, you know, a little bit here and there. Gotcha. And see this, this part is for me, because you're not into mushrooms, are you? I'm not a mushroom fan. So I'm gonna put a little mushroom for my chicken. Tomato fork for my chicken. Yeah, I don't like tomatoes either. I'm, there's gonna be so many people in the comments just. Ah! Well, see, but when you do this to your, like, see how it's. I'm gonna learn, old? guys. I'm sorry. It's nice and roasted. The flavors are caramelized. It's really good. All right, let's go get our chicken breast. You got a, what is this, lime over here? That's gonna be lime. That's what we're gonna finish our chicken breast with. Ooh, get yeah, that like right. lime, lime marinade. Well, we got some cilantro, you know. Look at them happy things. Yeah, you can feel the the, effect, the texture is nice and firm. You know, anyone that's not, if you don't feel sure, you know, just cut it open or split it open. Gotcha. Just look up in the inside, see it. Yeah. But if you do that, you're going to lose all that juice. But see, it's happy. It's happy. As long as it's happy, then we're happy, right? But when you cut your chicken breast in thirds, you know, it's not gonna take as long to cook because sure. it's not a big old piece of chicken breast. Well, I mean, big old six or eight ounce. It's a pretty decent sized portion. See, a couple of these I would probably, like that one, I would probably leave on for a little bit. That one I'm gonna leave on. This is good. That one I'm gonna leave on. You see, like, how much thicker they got a little bit here? Yeah. It doesn't cook even. That's what sometimes it's nice to tenderize it so, you know, it's all even. But then. It's just not as fun to eat the chicken when it's all tenderized sometimes. We're gonna pull that down. Let that rest, stay, get happy. Now this is cooked, I'm just gonna go to the veggies and the veggie tongs. Get some nice little lime on that. And see, so you don't need a sauce, it's hot. Keep it fresh. Got you. You know, right? Look at that right there. We are looking at gorgeousness. That's it. Voila. And now we get to eat a nice, nutritious, you know, meal. It's nice and nutritious. Thank you, sir, for the. Absolutely. Well, let's taste it. Well, awesome. we gotta try it. Yeah, we gotta right, try right it here. now. Right, let me. You gotta figure out somewhere to set my device. Well, no, just hold it now. I'll pass you the car. Give it a little bit. That. Yeah. 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 Alright. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You taste that in the chicken? That is amazing right before okay. my eyes. That right there. And the mushroom. Subscribe for more of that. Holy sh. I love Woo! Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. We're gonna learn more how to cook, son. Oh yeah, more videos coming to you. Just stay tuned.